So today we're going to be doing uh, how to uh, exchange your battery, replace the battery on the Moto 360 second gen, second generation Moto 360. So uh, I've actually had a bunch of these, the first generation as you can see here. I've had both colors and uh, they, were, they were a nice smartwatch when they came out. Uh, it was the first round smartwatch, so that was cool. But my experience with these has been very bad, to tell you the truth. Uh, my first one, the first gen, I had to replace the battery. And uh, even after that, it didn't last too long. Uh, this one ha had a screen problem. I don't know if you can see that, but the screen here, it's all dead pixels. And... Uh, so it's been one problem after another with these. You can't really consist consistently use them as a watch. Uh, the second gen I got, uh, and the battery surprisingly lasted uh, less, a lot less. I think in three months the battery on this was dead. So I'm going to replace the battery on this. I'm not sure if it is the battery issue, but since the watch is brand new and it just stopped uh, powering on, I'm I'm thinking it's the battery, maybe it's the screen, but uh, anyways, from my experience, that sucks. You uh, So I, I, I gave them two chances, and on the third one, that was supposed to be the refined, fixed model, it sucked even worse, so I, I'm guessing this is why uh, they stopped producing these watches. So you can tell that when you're, when you're actually charging these on the base, they tend to get very hot. That doesn't seem natural to me. And you're supposed to, I, mean, I don't mean it's not natural for a watch to, or any battery to get hot when it's charging, but I mean, uh, it doesn't seem natural that you would leave these watches in that temperature 24 hours a day when you're not using them. So I think that really must have degraded the battery performance and lifespan. Uh, and uh, to tell the truth, the, the the battery time on these actually sucked also. You couldn't really last the whole day with the battery. So what's up with that, you know? How, how are you gonna use a smartwatch that you can't just wear a whole day? So uh, let's get cracking on these. So the main difference between the first gen and the second gen is when you remove the, the, the back of the first gen, this whole part came off and it's very easy to break this part and it's very hard to find it to replace it so uh that sucked on the second one they actually fixed that and just the rim comes off you still have to kind of tear it up to remove it but you can just put some adhesive on this and it goes back and uh it'll be okay and you and the main difference here is this little knob you can tell that on the second gen it's kind of to the side here it's upper right and uh, you have to actually remove this little cap from it so you remove this little cap right here so you have to have a very thin set of pliers to remove this and uh, on the video like the only real video I found of this uh, it seemed very easy to remove but in practice it's not you need very nice pliers that are very resistant you can't just use any pliers uh, I'll show you an example here. These are too thick to actually get in here. So I've already opened this once. So this is already pre-loosened. But it was pretty tough to find pliers that could open this uh, because they have to be very thin and very strong at the same time to be able to stick in these little holes that you have here. So uh, that that's not as easy as it looks. So let's open this up and see if the, it's an actual battery issue. So like I said, I already uh, opened this before. So it's kind of pre-dismantled here, but I'll take you through the steps. So the first thing you would do, uh, you would remove this. It's actually a sticker. So it has some adhesive here. It's like a foam adhesive. And you just remove that very carefully not to break that. Uh, second step would be to remove this outer ring right here. This comes actually right here in the knob. So you gently remove that with pliers. Uh, next step is to use the pliers to 
free this little knob here. So you would stick your pliers in here and just unscrew this. Okay, so I've already have had this untightened before. And there's a little rubber uh, part right here. You have to really be careful not to lose that. So let's put that there. Next step is to uh, actually just unscrew this part. So let me see if I can do this. So you just hold it right here and you just pull that without damaging anything. Let's see how good we are at this. So as you can see right here, let me try to show you. So if you move that right there, it kind of unplugs and loosens up and you, we should be able to lift this off. So let's see if we can do this here. Here we go. So there is the frame and here is the inner part of the watch. So we're gonna carefully separate this and be very careful with these flat cables in here. You don't want that to break. If that breaks, then you have to replace the whole screen. So we really don't want this breaking. So let's be very gentle with this. And let's see if I remember how to do this correctly. So here's a little mic uh, protector here, another little piece of rubber to make this uh, watertight. And if I remember correctly, this little part right here comes off, this little rubber part right here. It's a little, another protection we have right there. And here is the battery itself. Now this battery could be uh, glued on here normally. So be careful when you uh, try to remove this battery. So let's see where this thing is connected. So I believe we have another little protection thing here for the little vibrating engine. So there is this. There is another protection right there. And here is the final battery connector. So again, be very careful with this flat cable. So let's see if we can remove this without breaking it. And here is the battery, the old battery. Let's see if the new battery looks the same. Not really. This new battery looks like it is a little bit different. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit that in there. It actually looks like it is smaller. But the capacity here, 375, 375, looks to be the same. Uh, the specs look like they're the same, but they're clearly different batteries. So I don't know what that is about. So I bought this from AliExpress. You can tell that they're different. So this is the original battery and this is the AliExpress battery. So they're clearly different. Seems to me like this one is a lower capacity battery, but let's see if we can actually get this to work anyways. So let's try to put this in here. Let's see if it'll fit. Uh, so yeah, the tips here aren't fitting. Well, they fit as well as the, the other one, so I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Also, you can see you, you, you have some copper on this one, I don't know what that's about. I don't know if this is a conductive thing. Uh, there should, there must be some reason why this is on here, but I'm not sure what it is. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Let's see if the connector here lines up. Seems to. So let's carefully plug this in here. Also be very careful with these uh, battery plugs they tend to break if you're not careful. So let's get this little plastic protection thing in place right here. There we go. And the, the rubber side uh, protection for this part right here. 
So when you're putting these in, look at how the, the, the actual uh, casing flows with the design of the rubber protection. So let's get this little guy right here, the microphone protection right here. So let me see if I can zoom into this a little bit better here for you. So continuing here, now that we've actually put the battery in place, let's put this back right here. So there was a little rubber protection that came off and I can tell that it's from right here because there's some glue where it was supposed to be. So that goes right there. So let's try to keep that from moving. And the second part is this right here. So this is the actual frame. So I'm gonna put it right here, but I'm gonna watch this little rubber thingy so it doesn't come off. There we go. And I'm hoping that rubber protection is in place. Uh, here is a little knob. So I'm gonna screw this back in place right here. Now, remember, we have a brand new battery in here, so most of the basics should be resolved. So let's try to screw this back in here. Something's wrong here. This thing is screwing back gently. Okay. So this is the part where I would normally need a very thin plier, some very thin pliers that I could screw this in with. Now the way I did this originally was I actually took this to a hardware shop and asked the guy if he had some pliers to uh, help me remove this little pen. In hindsight, I should have just bought the pliers from him but I didn't. So now I'm stuck with these rudimentary things here, which are probably gonna mess up my finish on the watch, but I figure I'm already screwed with this watch anyways, if I don't get this fixed. So let's see if this at least powers on or something. Well, apparently not. I haven't tightened this all the way because I wanted to test drive it first. Let me see if I can put this on a charger and see if this will actually light up or something. So guys, uh, I actually paused the video here to get a charger. So I have three of these from all the Motorola phones I've had. They're basically the same. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you what happened here. So what? You put the phone, the, the cell phone, the smartwatch in here, and the little light comes on. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can. So, the little light right here is actually on. Let's see if I can show you this. So, there's a the little light, and nothing shows up on the screen. So... Uh, theoretically, the, the, the watch is being charged, but nothing shows up on the screen. So probably I have a bad screen on a brand new watch. So this lasted about three months, I would say. It stopped working, so I just spent some money on a battery that's going to be useless. So here was my old battery. I noticed it wasn't puffy or anything, so... But still, it's the cheapest part to actually test first. So, there you go, Motorola. Probably why they discontinue these watches, because basically the quality control on these suck. Uh, so this is a three month old Moto 360. I, I kept it off for a while while I was replacing the, uh, actually buying the new battery. So now this is a dead watch. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna try the different screen on this. I, I'm, Frankly, I don't know if it's worth my time and effort, but for you guys that are thinking about this, so Moda 360, first gen, 
screen problems, also battery. First gen also, replace the battery on this twice and this little button doesn't work on this one anymore. And second gen, brand new, seems like the screen is dead. So uh, take that as you will. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section here. Uh, and uh, I will see you guys uh, on the next video.